Well, today I find myself in the high arid desert in a remote part of Colorado, about 30 miles outside of Canyon City. I just bought this 1980 Dodge three quarter ton pickup with the V8 318 manual four speed. A gentleman has just bought this property and this truck and some other miscellaneous things came with it. And what the owners told him before they sold the property to him, they were driving this truck and they parked it right here in 2001. That's 22 years ago and it hasn't ran since. And by the looks of it, it literally looks like they drove it right here, put it in park and walked off. And so what I'm gonna to attempt to do is get this truck running and driving right where it sits, drive it out of this spot and drive it all the way home. But the issue is, is I live in Tucson, Arizona, and that is about a thousand miles away. And later on in this video, we ride on a railroad that's been in continuous operation for over 140 years, completely lost in time using all of its original rolling stock from the 1920s. So like I was saying before, this is a 1980 Dodge W200 manual 4x4 with the 318. And that's what drew me to it, was that it was a manual and a 4x4. I thought that was very, very cool. And being up here where you are at, I mean, just look at where this thing is parked. There is nothing around. I mean, the nearest town is 30 miles away, so it's very remote. It's looking like we got tail lights, tailgate, even the Dodge Ram is still painted on there. I don't know if that's an aftermarket bumper, kind of looks like it. Oh, check this out. What's this say? Dodge City, Lakewood. Very cool. Look at the little cowboy man. That's cool. It's, uh, I like this because nowadays when you buy a car, they put a sticker on it with the dealership, you know, you just take the sticker off. But the, whenever you'd buy a car from a dealership, they actually put an emblem, like a real chrome emblem on the car to show what dealership it came from. I always thought that was cool. Truck, Colorado, four of 01, is that what that means? Oh, expiration. Yeah, fourth month, April 4th, Colorado, uh, 2001. So yes, this truck was last registered in 01 so not been on the road in 22 years check that out tailgate works oh we don't have any straps though so just put that back up look at the bed though this bed is very clean uh, colorado a lot of parts of the country trucks rust out real bad obviously we all know that but since it's so arid look at how good the bed looks no holes no rust holes and it's, it hasn't even been used that much because usually when beds are used real bad, you'll be able to see the cross railings underneath. So this bed might've been used, but it wasn't abused terrible bad. Looks like we have a spare in the back. What do we got here? CH something or other. Looks like it has a house on it. It's, I don't know what that is. It's got stuff in it still. Tires are aired up because since he just bought this property, he said I was gonna mess with the truck and I aired up the tires, but I never messed with the motor and I didn't, I got too many projects. He's got a lot of other things on this property that came with it that he's trying to sell. And he aired the tires up and that's it. They're holding air, which is cool because I don't think I can get the tires off where this thing sits. So I'm very, very glad that these hold air because at least if I get this thing running, I can drive it out of here to a better spot to mess with the tires um but check it out underneath here no rust do have a little bit there but uh i mean that's pretty typical you know everything flies up in there and it just gets it some of the trims missing there would be some uh, aluminum trim that would go all along here you can see remnants of it right there it would go the whole length to hide the uh the two-tone paint and right here the trim's gone too there would be a trim that goes all along the side oh well door doesn't open got some tow mirrors like the chrome stainless trim around the uh, door I like that got the opening back glass you can open it up get some fresh air in there and this is an official Ram power wagon very cool got your uh, locking hubs they're in the lock position so they might have been actually using it in four-wheel drive when they parked it um, it looks like they drove it up on this berm and parked it because you can see there's like a rock under that tire and there's a rock over there under the other tire. Got leaf springs, rear end, drive shaft, exhaust looks new. I mean, close to when they parked it probably. There's the gas tank. But the cool thing about that gas tank, I was thinking about it is that I, I can't reuse it on this trip because I got nowhere to dump the gas and I'm kind of constrained for time trying to get out of here. 
Um, but plastic tanks, they don't rust from the inside and have a bunch of rust flakes like metal tanks do. So if I get it home, I can clean that tank out and probably shove it back up in there because like I said, those tanks are like 300 bucks. Everything looks like it's all hooked up. We got the transmission right there. We got the transfer case right there. We got our drive shaft. We got our exhaust coming up here to the front differential. I mean, look at the bottom of the oil pan. It doesn't look like it's been leaking a bunch. Coming around to the driver's side. Got our brake hoses. Those actually seem to be pretty pliable and in, in decent shape, to be honest. Let's take a look at the floors. Floors look pretty decent. I think I see a little bit of rust over off to the left, but all in all, this is a solid buy, honestly. I'm, I'm happy with this so far. Look at those brake lines. They don't look like they're rotted in half, so I, I'm hoping I don't have to do any brake line stuff and I gotta be very careful uh, when I start messing with this because if this thing rolls backwards and nothing stops it, you are going off that ravine and it's very steep. The camera doesn't do it justice, so I gotta be very careful. Let's check out the inside. Oh, we got a sticker here. Travel tanks manufactured by Travel Accessories. This thing might have like an auxiliary uh, tank or something. Dash looks all there, got all the gauges, got uh, speedometer, fuel gauge, alternator, um, turn signals, check that out. Manual 4x4, very cool, very cool. It smells like rat turds really bad, <coughs> real bad, you can see it there. Um, oh yeah, that's where they were living for sure. Tranny. Now it's in gear right now. I don't want to mess with it, but it seems free. Got our 4x4. Four four. Uh, let's see here. Gas pedal seems to be free. Brake pedal. Let's see. Wow. I can't believe it. I can actually feel some pedal. It's unbelievable. And the clutch seems to be... Oh, whoa, I felt the truck shift. All right, good. The clutch is working. I looked this up online before I got here to see if this was a manual or a hydraulic clutch so I could order like slave cylinders and all that. And to my great surprise and joy, this is a manual clutch, which is much better. I like that a lot better. Got our headlight switch. Caution, do not drive with cargo light on, probably for the people behind you. Trans tanks, aux main. So it did have, or does have, dual tanks. And that's what that sticker was on the side of the dash. Uh, got our heater box, looking good, looking good. Everything is there. Oh man, someone robbed the ram head off it. Those things are worth, huh. Those things are worth a little bit of money. I wish that was still on there. I love those Rams heads. Some of them even lit up. The eyes, really cool. There she is in all her glory. Old 318. Uh, I've heard these are good motors. I've never done extensive work on them. I've never taken them apart. I'm hoping that it's a good motor to me. So we got alternator. Belts are even hooked up. We got, I think, a smog pump right there. This is when they started doing all the emission stuff. Um, some of these hoses, well, this is your battery cable, but I'm sure some of these hoses are your um, for the smog pump. Then coming over here, you can see all these, you know, this mess of hoses for, for, your, for your canister, which is also, I think, an emissions thing. Um, looks like somebody somewhere down the line has put a aftermarket fuel filter on it going uh, to the carb. Um, does have power steering, has power brakes. Let's see here. Yeah, a lot of mouse house. A lot of mouse house. But, I mean, it's a good thing that the air cleaner was in there because look at, uh, it's perfect in there. Out here they were living, but they couldn't get past the air filter element, so I'm kind of happy about that. Let's get this hose on. Oh, holly, two barrel holly, okay. Looks to be free. Um, somebody's put a coil on it. That's not an original coil. Someone's done that somewhere down the line. Also, the distributor cap and the wires have been done. 
Well, what's crazy is, is how many mice have been in here, but they didn't eat through the plug wires. It doesn't look like they did, at least. I mean, I don't see one that... I, they nibbled on them, but they didn't eat through any of them. Check the oil. Yeah, looks like we have oil. I mean, it looks pretty dirty, but we do have oil, and it does appear to be full. Let's see what we got in the master. Look at that. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Got fluid in the master. Man, that's awesome. Can you imagine having brakes, not having to spend three days fixing all the brakes? But the only thing we're going to have to watch out for is the calipers. They could get stuck. They're very, very old. And they could get stuck and the wheel could get real hot. So I don't know what the caliper situation is going to be. Um, antifreeze. Bone dry. Uh, power steering. Uh, yeah, there's like some down there, but yeah, it's down there. It's not reading on the stick, but there's some down there. See that move? There we go. There we go. She's turning. All right, positive. Let's see if we get any sparks. Because with all the mice that have ate around at these wires, you might have a short. I can't believe that. Check that out. Isn't that neat? Original Chrysler keys. I like that. Clutch. Key in. It's not the right key. Oh, I'm hearing stuff. Oh, the blinker's on. <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. Right blinker? No way, right blinker. Radio. I see lights coming on the radio. It's showing a station. I heard something. I think I might not have a good connection on the... Uh, All right, neutrality. All right, yes. Let's try it again. Perfect. That's a really good sign. What I want to do now is I want to unhook the fuel line from the carburetor because I don't know if that uh, mechanical pump is pumping gas or what's going on with that. We wanna hook up our own fuel supply. So maybe we can rig something up just to see if it starts. We gotta check for spark, see if we're getting that. Um, I mean, I could pull all the plugs out and put new wires on it and put new whatever, cap, rotor, coil, all that. But this is a will it run and drive, right? We wanna see what works sitting here in nature in the wild. The key on, okay, test light is working. Test for power at the coil. Oh, look at that. We got power at the coil. This is open, I just noticed this. This water outlet is open, so there's no water in the radiator. Um, I don't know if it's because of this, but we'll have to probably cut one of these hoses, put it over that, plug it off, just to be safe. Let's get this air cleaner out of the way, because we're gonna be monkeying in here a lot. We'll just take the hose off of this fuel filter, put this hose in a coffee cup or something and just feed gas to that carb and see if it lights off. Cause then if it lights off, 
then we can go ahead and do the mechanical pump on the block and you know run the run the hoses and stuff in order to get gas in my little cup here i'll have to go back down to the van get the gas tank bring it up here so i already put five gallons in this tank this tank isn't for this truck um it's for a chevy but it's it was the cheapest thing i could find online that would hold 20 gallons and these tanks have a big hole in the top this is where your um sending unit and maybe your fuel pump goes and there's like a ring around it so there's a giant hole here put some plastic over the hole and i taped it around so when the gas sloshes it doesn't come out this top but what he told me about the situation with the gas tank is is that uh, when they were driving it before they parked it they hit something from underneath and supposedly it bent the uh, pickup tube and it would only drive with half a tank of gas in it. So now knowing that it has at least a half a tank of gas that's over 20 years old, I already know that's a no-go. And I have nowhere to dump a half a tank of gas, which is what, eight, nine gallons? And when I'm done with it, I'll just sell it. Still got some coffee in it from earlier. Get that out of there. I don't want sugar and creamer and Colombian blend in my carburetor. Oh. Okay. Good. Should be enough to start it. Pump in. I got a little leak up there. Let's see if we can see any accelerator pedal action. I don't see any accelerator uh, pump action. Well, I had my voltmeter set up here because if this thing ran, I was going to immediately check and see if we were charging. I didn't even want to have to go back to my toolbox and get this. I wanted it ready because we got to conserve this. And my ends broke off and it's also not reading anything. It's on, but it's not reading. It's on the right settings and everything and we're not reading jack. So having a voltmeter is extremely convenient, especially in times like these, but um, not gonna be able to use this one because it's not reading anything. But either way, we can still see if it's charging if it runs by taking one of the battery terminal cables off. If the truck is using the battery to run, the truck will die because it's not using the alternator. If the alternator is charging, you can unhook your battery and <clears throat> the truck will still run because it's using the amps that are being generated from your alternator. So Right now I'm trying to figure out which wire uh, is the relay start wire for the truck. I got the key on. I want to crank it over and see if we have spark, but I can't really see from in the truck what's going on. So well, maybe this is the one that does the... Oop. Yeah, I was right. Oh. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Whoa, the truck was trying to move. Ooh, it's in gear. That's no no good. No good. So um, Let's take it out of gear so that we're not doing that and i don't know if i want to test that parking brake sometimes they'll work and you press them and then you release them and they don't release just right so i'm not doing that got my plug wire off let's see if it, there's any spark i can't really tell let's try it up here at the oh man Ooh, that wire gets hot, boy. Let's see if the coil wire, let's see if the coil wire is doing anything. Oops, sorry, sorry. I thought I saw a little jump in there. Yeah, I don't think we're getting spark. 
going on down here? What are you boys doing? Oh, jeez, come on, get out of here. All right, I've monkeyed around with this for a bit, tried to figure out what's going on, and I think we're getting down possibly to the bottom of it. So I traced these wires from the distributor. There's two wires that come out, because remember, this is not points, this is electronic ignition. There's two wires that come out of the distributor, and there's a wire that comes off of the negative side of the coil. They all go through the loom, and they end up here. I took this off already at the ignition control module. I'm assuming this ignition control module is probably bad. And something else I noticed is if you look at this stuff, everything looks factory original, except the distributor cap looks brand new, the coil looks brand new, the wires look brand new, everything else looks untouched. This is a Chrysler you can see right here. It's hard to see, there's a Chrysler emblem on that. So that is original. Maybe tried to put a bunch of new ignition parts on it and they never figured out it was the ignition control module. Now, I don't know, I'm just assuming, I don't know. Just to do some more checking because I really wanna make sure this is it before I go drive 60 miles. The ballast resistor should have power right here, right? You can see, you can test it also right up here. And then down here. So the ballast resistor has power to both sides. And then this is the plug. We're getting power here and power here. And two of these, I mean, so not all of them are going to have power, but yeah. So it's probably the module. Now, seeing that we're getting power everywhere we need to be, I went ahead and I plugged it back in. And when I went to put it on, I saw a little bit of sparks like it was trying to ground. So I'm going to try it one more time before I go into town and waste a bunch of gas. So I got the fuel pump on. I'm going to crank it over and see if, if, if it runs. Oh! No way! Yes, dude! I can't believe it! Wow, it's running! Okay, uh, I'm not seeing any oil pressure yet. I'm not seeing the alternator charging gauge move. I don't see the fuel gauge moving. I don't see anything moving. So it might have oil pressure, I just can't tell. There we go. She's idling. All right, well, we know she's got spark. Yeah, man. Oh, crap. Oh, man, I didn't see any of that. You know, it's probably coming from that hose I didn't block off. Dude, I'm so happy. I'm so relieved. You have no clue right now. Yes, yes. Now, I'm not complaining, but it's kind of weird that it would run now because when I took the plug wire off and the coil wire off to test for spark, I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. Usually, if you have spark, you can hear like a click, 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 click and I didn't see or hear any of that. I don't know if there was a bad ground maybe to the body or what. I just filled the radiator with fluid. I don't see it dripping out anywhere right now. So I also plugged this heater hose outlet off right there and I hooked these two wires back together, just twisted them together. I wanna to see if I can get this thing to run a little longer. I had to go find a can laying on the ground because my coffee can started disintegrating. The gas just literally melted it, so. Let's take this lug off, and if it dies, that means the alternator ain't doing nothing. See, here's the negative cable. Oh, I wonder if we ran out of gas. Yeah. We know she's charging. So what we'll do is we'll take our rubber hose and we will stick it in the gas tank. And then we'll run it up to the front because that's what we're gonna do anyway since we can't use the gas tank in the truck. Just kind of shimmy it in between the bed and the cab. Oh, 
Well, that fuel pump is starting to work. Gonna have to unhook that. So I got water in it. I got the I got the hose ran from the tank to here. I want to run it a little longer. And then I want to move this into a clearing because where it sits, I mean, my feet are right up on the bumper. I mean, it's right up on this berm. It's hard to work on it. So I want to kind of get it over there in that clearing a little more so I can work on it a little better. So see if the brakes work. Oh yeah, the brakes actually work. I can't believe that. Oh yeah, they're definitely working. Power steering works. It needs to be filled a little bit, but she works. second now we have second nice pull it up here in this clearing and be much easier to work on everything and those brakes work really friggin good I am like massively impressed by that should be a good truck yet for 22 years it was sitting right here up against this berm. This thing was parked during the hype of the dot-com bubble burst in 01. Lived through the Great Recession of 08 and 09. Sat here all through COVID. A lot of life has happened since 01. And there you go, some 26-year-old kid drove it out of its grave. And it's running better and better all the time. The more you run it, the better it's gonna get. Uh, I don't know why when I, you know, when I give it the throttle, it kind of tries to die out. I don't know if that's a vacuum leak or vacuum advance problem or, or what. If you see, that is a brand new water pump. I mean, it looks new. You can see there's silicone right there. And so hopefully, you know, that water pump carries us through. Looks like it's been replaced recently. I mean, right before they quit driving it, maybe. It's been sitting here for a minute and it is bone dry on the ground. Um, very happy about that. Now, what the thing to do is to do the fuel pump, change oil, change the filter, check the differentials, check the transmission, see how much gear oil is in the transmission, check the gearbox, or not the gearbox, but the transfer case. I might want to get a look at the brakes either way, just to see what the pads look like and whatnot, and if they look decent, we'll just run with them. I mean, it stops like a bear, man. It works great. Also, I need to check all my lights. I mean, we need headlights, tail lights, signals, all that good business. So let's just check the lights right now. That's the easiest thing to do. I'm getting kind of tired today. Can you believe that? The fastened seatbelt light comes on and the buzzer. That is so cool. Let's see if the radio does anything. Is there a seek button? Scan? Oh well. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Oh. Low doesn't work. I mean, I don't have the heater hooked up anyway, but... Uh, fan does work. Washer? Oh, God. Don't want to do that without blades on it because you'll scratch the windshield. Well, it doesn't even matter, you know, whatever. But all right, wipers work. Good stuff. Headlights are out. We got. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. Uh, tail lights. All right, we got one. Yeah, we have both. Dude, what do you know about that? Dimmer switch. Usually, if they're working a light on the dash, sometimes would come on. I don't know if they had them here, but. All right, dude, I'm loving this. This thing just kind of came out of its little perch. 
Oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. It's set for all that time and all this little stuff works. That's really neat. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mess with you. Now you won't go off. Let's see if we do have signals left. All right. Yeah, it's doing it. See it? Looks like it's kind of struggling a little bit, but it's doing it. I guess you can attack it any which way you want because it all needs to be done. So we'll just start with the uh, fuel pump. So here's the old one. And uh, you see this? You see all this grease, how it's like all perfect. And you see these little tchotchkes. And you see them all over here. Those marks are all over the valve cover and all that too. Those are those mice. That's what they do. They scratch and gnaw at everything. You know, they're trying to find something to eat. The fuel pump is on and installed. Last thing I want to do today is get these tires off, put them in the van so that I can drop them off tomorrow to get done. So I was trying to take this lug nut off. You see that? See how hard that is? I mean, this thing is in neutral and the hubs are free. This thing should be turning. So I'm kind of worried that caliper could be locked up because this thing should I mean it should just spin so <clears throat> that's not good boy I miss power tools <sighs> power tools are a gift from God <sighs> see that our smoking gun. That dog don't hunt. That caliper needs to be changed. I can guarantee this one's right behind it. We'll just go into town and do everything. Tires, calipers, all that good business. Disc brakes aren't hard, but drums, they're a little more complicated anyway just because they're drum brakes. But the way these drums are, you have to take the axle out of the rear end to get the drum off and that's just a whole pain i don't want to deal with so i'm gonna jack the back up after this see if they're breaking and releasing if they are huh, leave them alone <sighs> crack the brake hose loose these are these brake hoses look good Shoes could be replaced. It looks like it's breaking and releasing, so good enough for me. Brakes. So we're going on day two of the 1980 Dodge. Got the new tires. I'm getting out here a little later than I wanted to. It's about one o'clock, but you know, it is what it is. I can't get my truck up here. That's why I'm having to push all this up. We'll get our back tires put on and we'll get the truck set on the ground. And then we'll be able to move to the front where I'll do one new passenger caliper and one old driver caliper. And then we can do some more maintenance checks. We can check all the fluids and stuff like I wanted to do yesterday, but it was just getting too late. I get some comments and they say, why don't you bring power tools with you or you know, electric impacts, electric ratchets? Well, you have to be extremely careful with what you bring because remember, when you check a bag, you only get 50 pounds and electric impacts and ratchets are big and batteries are heavy and electric tools are heavy, you know? I bring hand tools because they're lighter and I can do more with them. You know, whatever's in that checked bag has to get you a thousand miles home. You like my cheater bar? The bar they give you with these is way too friggin' short. And it puts you in a bad spot because look at jacking this truck up, you have to get underneath it. And I don't trust these little Walmart jacks. You wanna be not underneath it when you're doing this stuff. 
but now that the tires are on it, you know, it's not as big a deal. It's even if it falls down, it's just gonna fall on what the tires. Here's the metal and the material on the old one, and here's the metal and material on the new one. So, yeah, definitely worth switching out. See, before, you could not do that. It was just, you saw, it was totally stuck. That's way better. And boom. All right, pro tip, if you're ever bleeding brakes by yourself, what I've done is press it, pump it six times, seven times, whatever you wanna do. And then I found this pipe laying around my breaker bar wasn't long enough, so I found this. Press it down. Shove it like that. It's as if someone else is in there holding it for you. There we go. Big ol' air pocket. Alright, so we'll just play it safe and jack it up over here. No need to test our luck. Look at that. She looks pretty good with new tires. Like a brand new truck almost. Yeah, she definitely needed an oil change. All right, let's just jump right to the pliers. So I got the filter on and while I was down there, I checked the manual gearbox and it's full of gear oil. Yeah, it's full of gear oil and it's clean, so Guess what we're gonna do? Leave it. So I've done a few things. I checked the manual gearbox. It's full of gear oil and it's clean. The front differential was pretty much full. The transfer case was about a quart low. There's my pump down there. There's my rubber hose going wrapped around all the way to the bed. And then I got it coming up here to the carburetor. So now we can run it on the mechanical fuel pump. Might have used what was in the carb and not pulled yet from the tank. Let's give it the old tried and true love tap. This is not good. Yeah, we're getting gas coming all out of the top of that thing. It's gonna have to come off. And this battery is about dead. So when I go into town tonight, I think I'm gonna take the carburetor off and take it with me, take the battery off and take it with me. And I think AutoZone has like a free charging service. They'll charge the battery up for you. So I'll have this thing charged and I take this to, to my room or whatever and uh, rebuild it tonight or tomorrow morning. I took the top half off of the, the bottom half. And you can see there's something in here I don't like. Although this carburetor looks pretty clean, 
Uh, these floats right here are neoprene. They're not brass, and so what happens is, is these neoprene floats actually soak up gas over time, and then they sink to the bottom, and then um, it, it, they just are ineffective. But the carburetor kit doesn't come with new floats. I think that the floats aren't our problem. I think it's the, the needle and seat, because I can blow through here, simulating gas coming in, and then I can raise these floats all the way to the top, and it gets a little harder to blow through, but I can still blow through, meaning that gas can still get through. That's why it's flooding over the top, I think. You know, here's your jets right here, and you can see, see it coming out here and here. If you do over here. So it's not plugged up, and it was running good when it was running. Uh, it just was flooding over. The accelerator pump, it came around and it started working. Listen to this, I'll show you. So, I'm simulating gas going in. Hear air passing through. And then the floats come up. Hear how I can still blow through it though, with the floats up? A little less, but I can still blow through it. They're not seating correctly. So these obviously don't look the same. Um, I don't know if that's going to deter us or not. Hey. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, it's not going to fit. Oh, see, there's some crap on my finger. Let's see if that fixes it. All right. I need to keep this thing running because that battery obviously sounded like they didn't charge it which kind of frustrates me but i think that alternator is charging and i need that battery to be charged <laughs> you got to do everything yourself With all this cranking and not starting, I think the plugs are kind of fouled out. See how black they are? I smell a little bit like gas. We need to clean these off and make sure we're getting good spark. I took one of the spark plugs out and I cranked it, and I'm not getting spark at the spark plug, but I am getting it at the coil because it shocked me, so that's how I know. Took the cap off. I cleaned the rotor because the, the rotor brass was dirty. And if this thing starts, we need to keep it running. There we go, thank God. 14.7, good. She sounds actually really good. So cleaning the plugs seemed to do the trick. Also sanding the rotor off, it was dirty. She sounds like she's firing on all eight. Honestly, it doesn't sound like it's missing. I wanna run it until the uh, yeah thermostat opens. It's not open yet, it's still cold. Oh yeah, baby. Let's listen to the exhaust. Sounds pretty good. Oh yeah. I'm gonna let this thing run for a bit and I'll check in with you guys in a bit. It's been running for a bit. It's running good. Nothing's leaking on the ground. I'm not leaving just yet, but I gotta skedaddle on down this mountain because it's so hard to work on up here. I'm gonna move it to a different spot so we can finish up before we head out. All right, brakes are working.
it is the beginning of day four. Before I actually leave and head off on the road and say sayonara, I want to do a test drive, see if everything feels good, see if it's going to run and drive. And after that, we can head out. To be honest, I've never really owned or driven manuals, so forgive me for you know not necessarily understanding how this works. So four low, neutral, four high, two high. So what, we're in four low, neutral, does that mean we won't go anywhere? Okay, so that means we won't go anywhere, so that's neutral. You see my breath? <laughs> it's cold. Okay, so neutral, okay, is that four high? No, that's still neutral. Four high too high so all the way up is too high and the hubs aren't locked so first gear Right now we're going down the mountain. Ooh, 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 ooh. Right now we're going down the mountain, so I can't really test the transmission. Oopsies. If you can't find them, grind them. That ain't good. I'm in fourth gear, I'm hitting the gas, and it feels like a slushy automatic. I think that clutch is slipping. I mean, it's gone. When I put it in first and I let off the clutch, you know, we're not going anywhere. Oh man, that ain't good. I don't even know if I can limp it up this hill back to Kevin's house to figure out what I'm gonna do with this thing. I mean, I can't even get up this hill in first, guys. backing up <laughs> oh my gosh currently in first gear hitting the gas revved up still in first gear hitting the gas I can that clutch is getting hot that might be why it's grabbing now but only because it's hot. Well, what was supposed to be a test drive to make sure we were good to go a thousand miles turned into this truck not even being able to go one. It will not go anywhere with the condition of that clutch. That's why they parked it is because the clutch was bad. So I went with the only option that I could really find.
this day just went from bad to worse. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. You see how up front, do you think it'll pull it back over? Oh yeah. idea. Will this U-Haul run and drive 850 miles back to Tucson, Arizona with a whopping 6,968 total miles on the odometer? Honestly, I am a little disappointed that it didn't get to make the drive. You know, I mean, you hate admitting that you got beat or that something got the best of you, but you go messing around with things and sometimes you get popped. Everybody gets popped once or twice in their life. And I was trying to find cars on Facebook that I could go hurry up and buy, you know, some cheap $1,500 hoopty, but nobody was picking up the phone. Maybe it's a Saturday, people were out drinking or something and they're waking up late. I don't know what people do. I couldn't get a hold of nobody. I contacted like four or five people. And again, I do have some cash on me, but I don't have enough to like buy a vehicle. So I was going around to ATMs, getting like $200 at a time. You know, I mean, it's just a nightmare. And then you go f buy something and then it's 25 years old and then it could break down on you too. And now you have two vehicles on the side of the road that aren't going anywhere. Did a little over 300 miles today we made it to a budget in here in durango colorado i'm staying in durango because there is something extremely exciting that i've been wanting to do and i'm going to do it tomorrow and bring you guys along with me no video of mine is going to be complete without some cool american history in it we'll see you tomorrow for it they're bringing it out right now i'm like the only one here <laughs> that is so cool Beautiful. 
Now, when a bounce are these locomotives made? Like, what year are these? Well, this one, this one celebrated 100th year this month. So, 1923. Um, so this is a K28. In 1923, she was built by Alco. Alco. Um, and she came out to Al Alamosa, Colorado via standard gauge um, rail. And then they put her on the narrow gauge there in Alamosa, and then she came over under her own power, along with, she had, we have the other two. There were 10 of them total in the beginning. <laughs> So seven of them went up to uh, Alaska during World War II, and the DNRGW didn't want to bring them back, so they trapped up there. So we have the remaining three. Dude, I'm totally freaking right now. In the middle of the track. Yeah. Check it out, now they're turning it. Look at the wheel on the Yeah. Good old cool Look, there's the engineer. Compressed air. Compressed air turntable, so it turns on it's pneumatic. They're driving it off the turntable now. Wish this thing wasn't in the way, but it's the best I could do. So, just a little bit of history on locomotives about what I know is that they used to label them like 040242 or whatever because there would be. Um, riding wheels and driving wheels and the way they were configured is how they would designate the locomotive so this would be two and then there's one two three four driven wheels so that's a two four and then I think there's two riding wheels back here so two so this would be a two four two locomotive four driven wheels on this side four on that side so two eight two it's, it's fascinating when you look at locomotives, you can see the progression of technology. If you know anything about car motors, you can literally see this is a cylinder and there's a piston in there. Cars have cylinders and pistons, but instead of being gasoline driven, these are steam driven. So there's a piston that moves back and forth in there, drives push rods and connecting rods that connects to the driven wheels. Basically, and there's your crank, essentially a you know, crankshaft, but there's your balancing right there. So when it's going down the track, it's not all wobbly. So, and then there's valves in here, right, that designate the steam goes to this side. And then when the piston pushes all the way that side, the valve opens this way and it pushes steam in here to drive the piston each way. And so there's valves in a motor, pistons in a motor, connecting rods in a motor, all that stuff. All, a lot of the technology from steam engines got transferred over to gas motors, except the innovation was being ran off of, you know, compression and um, fuel. There's all kinds of tubes that go through the boiler, and then when the heat travels through the tubes, and then the water heats up, and these are what they call steam domes. When it heats up and turns to steam, it goes in the domes because heat rises, and then steam will rise up to the top, and it will try and force its way out but all that pressure can't escape and they run it through pipes and they capture it in the cylinder to drive it. The firebox is up there. Once it burns coal or oil or whatever, all the heat comes through the tubes and then this is the smoke box. The silver section is the smoke box and then the steam and the, um, well, the expended steam from here and the spent fuel both travel up through the stack. You know, with that light up there and then the plow and the cylinders on each side, that looks tough. Aggressive. Yeah, it just looks tough. But see that roundhouse, you know, as it turns, there's tracks around the circle and they can put, I mean, it's really efficient and they can put a train here. I'm sorry. They can put a locomotive in there and there and there and there. And it's a really cool, cool design. How did this little strand of track here stay alive for 140 um, years? You know, bottom line is the view. <laughs> the view? It's the tourist trade. Hollywood came out. They made a bunch of movies. And that really was... Was this, was this the... Was this the train that was in Old Brother Where Art Thou? No. Uh, no. Wow. That was really special. I just got out of the Roundhouse Museum and 
no one even saw it. It was way out of the way. Look at all these people. They didn't even catch it. I feel like I have a, a dirty little secret, you know? I, heck, I got to see that locomotive come out of the roundhouse all by my lonesome. I got that lady's time and all that information, basically free and clear and no one around to, to bother us. So actually, the Durango and Silverton Railroad was not named after the town. The town was actually named after the railroad. The Denver and Rio Grande Railway founded Durango in 1880, and the railroad arrived in 1881. It just goes to show you how important railroads were in the forming of America. Towns began just to service the railroad industry. It could haul people, freight, and more importantly, ore from mines, which is what this railroad's original purpose was. Silverton, which is where we're headed now, used to be a mine town for gold and silver. But, however, in 1893, silver prices went from $1.05 to 63 cents an ounce. That means for every ounce they mined, they could sell for $1.05. And then every ounce they mined, they could only sell for 63 cents, which absolutely squeezed their profit margins and forced 10 large mines in the Silverton area to close. Now, for a great many decades after that, the Durango and Silverton Railroad kind of operated in obscurity, not really being able to find its footing uh, for profit or a purpose. But eventually, Hollywood came in, filmed a bunch of movies with the Durango and Silverton, which helped them out financially and also boosted their tourism. But in the late 60s, the Durango and Silverton was designated a National Historic Landmark, and it passed into some owners' hands who saw the value in it, wanted to save it, preserve it, restore it, and keep it operational. And because of those efforts, these train cars that are original to the line and these locomotives that have been operating on this track for 100 years are still going today. Yes, that is correct. Locomotive number 473, which has been in service since 1923, has only been out of service two years for routine maintenance. Other than that, it's been operational for a hundred years. So we just got off the train in Silverton. We're gonna be here for a couple of hours, hanging out, I'll probably get some lunch. And then at like two o'clock, we're gonna board again to go back. But I wanted to get a good look at this locomotive. This is where they made all the water. I believe it also holds the fuel. So it would've been cold, but now it's probably oil. This, I believe, is the compressor, I want to say. Correct me if I'm wrong. But you can see those rods moving up and down. There they go. And there's a door that opens and they can walk on the catwalk. And there's stairs and they can go all the way to the front of the engine. You can see on the uh, tinderbox there, oil capacity 2,000, water capacity 5,000 gallons. Just look how beefy those leaf springs are, man. And these right here, these are grease boxes. I don't know if they still use these to grease the axles. So each set of axles has a box right here, and those lids actually open. And they used to shove those full of grease because that's how they'd grease the axles going down. And part of the brakeman's job, that was the purpose of a caboose. They don't have cabooses anymore, obviously, but we all know what a caboose is. A caboose would be at the back and there would be a brakeman. And what they would do is they would look on each side all the way down the train to see if any of these boxes were smoking, because they'd smoke and catch on fire if they ran out of grease. Yeah, they're, it's not grease though, it's oil. Oh, it's oil. Wow. And there's like a rag at the bottom? Well, there's a mop head. It's a mop like head. Kind of like a sponge with a bunch of cotton waste on it. Oh, I see. The water comes from the tinder box and goes through this pipe and then it feeds the... I'm not sure what that means. There's boiler. That's your boiler pressure. 200 PSI of steam pressure. backing up the train. It's coming in backwards so we can go back.
I'm in the Roundhouse Museum after the train ride and there is nobody in here. Can you believe it? Nobody, it's the same way this morning when I saw the train come out of the roundhouse, the locomotive I should say, come out of the roundhouse. But look at this. It's all empty. I mean, I love this kind of stuff. This is what I live for. I want to sit and watch this video, but ah, I got to make it quick because I need to get out of here, you know, like it's getting late. But man, this stuff is so fascinating. I could spend hours and hours and hours in here just learning about all of this stuff. Look at all the cool stuff they have in here. And nobody even cares to take the time to come in here and check it out. I mean, isn't that sad? So after the train ride in Durango, I made my way down to Gallup, New Mexico. It's about 160 some miles. I uh, didn't make a whole lot of headway yesterday, but the train ride took all day long. I think I got there at 8.30 and I didn't get out of there till 7 p.m. I mean, it was crazy. It was really long, full day. Uh, but today, I think we're gonna make it back home. We got 350 miles to do. That's easy, that's no big deal. Take about maybe five, six hours to do. Parked my rig at an abandoned gas station. And there's a mo <laughs> and there's a motel right in front of me that says 1995 single room. 1995 for a room. The cheapest I can ever find a room is like 70, 80 bucks. I mean, what do you get for $20? I should have stayed there just for, you know, the nostalgia of it. I should have stayed there just to see what it was like. So here's the Super 8 that I stayed at. And then there's just this abandoned gas station. They just closed up shop. And then there's that motel, 1995 single. I'd like to see what $20 gets you. I mean, I'm very, very curious about that $20. I tried to see if they were hooked up, but this uh, telephone's gone and then this one is cut or whatever. somewhere in there but I can't actually see any flames pretty interesting though new controlled burns out here in the forest well we made it back home do these come out these ramps I didn't know these ramps came out. Well, that makes things a lot nicer. Yeah, the alternator was charging like 14 something. Good, good. Go ride that train. What do you mean? Go up there and got a pickup truck. This you go ride the train. What? Buy this? <laughs> yeah. 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 You, you did all that just to go ride the train? I went through that whole debacle just so I could ride a steam train. That's what I. That, that's the kid I raised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad about that clutch. Yeah. It looks it like it's got a new exhaust on it. Dude, it does, isn't that crazy? Yeah, new exhaust, new, it looked like a brand new cat. Yeah. I'm in gear. Yeah, you're in gear. <laughs> I feel like I should be going somewhere, but I'm not. Feels like a slushy automatic. Yeah, she's... Clutch is poo-poo. Yeah, she wouldn't have made it. Especially all those steep grades I went in to, to get out of Colorado, that, I don't, it wouldn't have done it. No, it won't even pull itself in the yard. Well, Box, look at all those receipts he kept. I mean, there's just loads and loads of receipts in there. I wish there was a receipt for a clutch. Hey, radio works. I don't know, kind of weird. I see a lot of poop, but it smells, don't smell too bad in here. I wonder what the deal is with that. Well, as soon as I got there, I rolled the windows down on it, let it aerate. Plus, I just pulled it 800 miles, so it probably is all on the highway now. 
It smells like the mountains of Colorado. <laughs> it smells like pines. You know, it's pretty tight. It's a, it's tight. You know, it's not like it's all rattle trapped out. Like the steering and stuff? Yeah. I mean, it may only have 118 on it. That or he done a lot of work on the front end and stuff. I don't know. It's real tight. It's real, it's not, it's not all uh, sloppy and worn out. So, $89, labor was only 65 <laughs> Oh, 98 He 98. just, yeah, he did all that right before he parked it. Yeah. Did the drive shafts, that receipt was for drive shafts. Uh-huh. What? Nah, you don't want to hear this one. What? It says a clutch disc and clutch assembly and... Really? Clutch disc, throw out bearing. In 92. 92. So he could have put a lot of miles on it in uh, 12 years. It says years. clutch disc, clutch assembly. That's what it says. I don't see the miles. Phone number. See if we can get a warranty swap. <laughs> clutch disc $29 and a clutch assembly $35. That's awful reasonable. Yeah, but that was 20 years ago. No, that was 30 years ago. Then he bought a lottery ticket right after all that. <laughs> <laughs> or that or you bought the lottery tickets. No, I didn't do it. You bought them dang lottery tickets. Another one. Another what? Throw out bearing. Another one? Mm-hmm. It was 11-11-92. Somebody was busy with the clutch, but they drove it for a while. Hmm. You wouldn't think that he'd have burnt the clutch out that quick with... I mean, it's probably, it has to have only maybe 30,000 miles on the clutch. I mean, I don't believe this truck's a 218,000 mile truck. Huh, it's kind of odd. Well, there it is. Yeah, there it is. What are you going to do? So a few things. I still want to thank Billy. Billy is the subscriber who reached out to me and said, hey, my buddy's got this property with this truck on it. Let me put you in contact with him. Good eye, Billy, finding this truck because this is exactly the kind of vehicles that I go for. If you are a subscriber who knows where a complete original abandoned vehicle is, always message me because I'm always listening and stuff. So I appreciate Billy for reaching out to me and, and putting me in contact with Kevin. And I also want to thank Kevin for letting me work on his property for a few days. Thank you for all your help, Kevin, with the tractor, helping me pull it back on the dolly, my mess up. Um, thank you for feeding me lasagna. It was really good. And just in general, all the help you gave me while I was on your property. But regarding the truck, you know, what do we do with it, guys? Let me know in the comments. Do we put a clutch in it? Do we make it roadworthy? I think it kind of begs the question, right? I mean, it's right there. I think the only natural thing to do is, is to get it running and driving properly, which would require putting a clutch in it, which is a whole nother video. Gonna have to pull the engine for that. Typically you pull the transmission, but because of all that 4x4 stuff going on, it might be easier to pull the engine. We'll have to kind of weigh out those options. But really, in general, it's, it's a decent truck. The engine runs like a top with no new parts, essentially. All I did was clean the carburetor and the plugs and stuff, and it ran great. The brakes worked other than a stuck caliper. All the lights worked. I didn't have to do one ounce of wiring to this thing. Headlights, running lights, tail lights, all that. Half of the uh, internal accessories worked. And also, your views and comments and support and feedback and likes help. And if you want to support the channel in a more direct way, I have channel memberships open. I have two different tiers. Uh, there's some perks in there that you guys might like. So, so check out the channel memberships. There's a few perks in there that you guys might like that would really support these videos and more future flying drives. So you'll be seeing this truck again very soon. And until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next video.